This is Film Masters. On this episode, we're finishing part one of the Doctor Strange's digital matte painting. Doctor Strange, you think you know how the world works? episode we're finishing the last tutorial that you would have seen where we created a digital matte painting in Adobe's Photoshop. We're going straight into Adobe's After Effects now and we're going to be animating the matte painting. I'm in After Effects now so let's go up to composition and go new composition. I'm going to call this Doctor Strange and I'm going to leave it as 20 by 14 and height 1080 and select OK. I've currently got it at the 23.976, which is true 24 frames a second. Select OK. And we're going to double click in the project area. I'm going to select our Doctor Strange matte fin, which we just saved out of Photoshop and import that. I'm going to leave it as composition and make it edible layer styles and select OK. Now that I've done that, I'm now going to get the Doctor Strange matte fin and put that straight onto the project window. And as you can see, it has appeared in our project window. We probably need to make some finer adjustments. So I'm going to scale that up. So let's press S and just bring it up a little bit. And press P for position and bring it into position where we want it to sit in the frame. So I'm going to move it to about here. So I'm going to double click now on the composition and it will open up all our saved layers from Photoshop. As you can see, all named. So we've got our clouds, space and so forth. And we've also got our curves. So I'll just hide the curves for the time being. And we're going to make some adjustments now to some of the layers. Now, what we want to do is we want to make it so that the background layer is in the in the far background and the foreground layer is in the foreground. So therefore, we're giving the scene a little bit of depth. So we're going to do some 3D layers. So let's select 3D layers on all layers like so. And we're going to select the London, London copy, space and clouds. And I'm going to come up to the Z axis and we're going to push them back in the scene. And then going to press S and we're going to scale all those images up like so. And that's going to give us some depth straight away. And I'll show you what I mean. So when we go to the uh, view, let's go and drop the view down to four views. You can see that all the layers that we've selected now and scaled up are distanted between the foreground and the background layer. So therefore it's going to give us a little bit of depth when we're moving a camera around. So let's go back to views and let's go back to one view. And I'm going to select the New York layer now. And I'm going to bring that forward. And we're just going to position that in our scene. So if I go back now to the Doctor Strange composition, you'll see that everything has been moved into perspective and this is where we'll be able to view our final output. So let's go back to the original Doctor Strange and we're going to go up to layer now and go new and camera. I'm going to leave it as camera one because we're only going to use the one camera. Um, we're going to drop the preset down to uh, 35 millimeters and select OK. And we're going to make some more adjustments now. So let's go back again and we're going to select all layers except for the New York layer and the curves layer. And we're going to press S to scale them up. And we're going to scale them up a little bit more. Like so. And we're going to just drop them down now. Now let's start making the camera move. But before we do, what I want you to do is to go into the project window and open up Ocean Fall. Select the file, select OK. And we've just brought that in. So I'm going to get the Ocean Fall layer now. I'm going to put that above New York. And I'm going to make sure that's a 3D layer. And I'm going to bring it forward until New York disappears. So it's in front of New York. Like so. And we're going to make some adjustments now. So let's go up to the rotation tool. And first of all, we're going to rotate it. And 
and press V and I'm just going to move the layer now and we're going to bring it forward so that it's in front of our New York scene so we may have to zoom out to do that or we can even grab the sides and shrink it down a little bit now what I want to do in 3D is I want to make it so it sits above our river. So I'm going to have to move it forward a bit of the city that we've got there. Okay, and I'm going to move it across till it lines up. And now we're going to adjust it. So I'll just hide that layer for a second. So it's in line here with the edge of the river. So using the rotation tool and the X axis, we're going to make it fit to the right perspective. So I'm just lifting it up now. Looks like we're gonna to have to make some more adjustments. So it's just a matter of making sure that we're getting it in perspective. Okay, just like that. Now I'm just going to move that forward a little bit. So it's right on the edge. Okay. Now the reason we're doing this is when the camera moves across the river, it's going to give a little bit of perspective so it looks like a real element. So if I was to go to views now and have a look at what we've set up and go to four views, you can see that we've got the background layer here at the very top. So that's our London and the sky. We've got our New York City. And in front of that, we have got our river set up. So we've got that set up now and we're gonna go back to views and go back to view one. And I'm going to select that same layer and I'm gonna press control D. So press control D to duplicate it. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring it across and we're gonna rotate it. So it's 90 degrees so that we've got our pitch of our water and I'm going to move that across now so it lines up with the very tip of where the water is over here so that's just a matter of just dragging it across nice and slowly until we can get it line up and I'm going to drag it down now and zoom out and bring it in and it's going to see how close we are so we want to bring it out just a little bit now so what we're doing is we're giving forced perspective now you don't have to do that if you don't want to uh, you can use the water that we've already created but there's a reason why i'm doing this and you'll see that shortly Okay, so let's grab the top layer now of water and we'll bring that we'll bring that across until it lines up like so. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Now we've got, if for example, we had some elements of water vapors and stuff like that, we can composite it on this um, and that would sell the scene a little bit more. So I'm gonna go up to layer, new and solid and I'm going to make sure that the solid is selected as black and call this ripple and select okay. So we're gonna go up to effect now and we're gonna to go to noise and grain and we're going to select fractal noise. So first of all, we're gonna make it so that the scene runs for around about Let's go 10 seconds. So let's adjust it. Press N on the keyboard to trim the workspace. And I'm going to go back to home and we're going to make it a light animation. So let's select evolution and let's go back to the 10 seconds. And I'm going to put 360. So that if I watch it, it will actually slowly change over time. We've got this like so. So that's going to give us that shimmer look of water, for example. 
and I'm going to make this now a 3D layer. And now we're going to make it fit on top of the water. And then I'm going to position it on top of the edge. And the moves are exactly the same as when we're set up the previous water layers. So all I'm doing is simply replicating the same thing. So one of the things when we're making a 3D matte painting, a lot of it is setting it up. So when you're making a matte painting, one thing, especially when you're in Photoshop, is to make sure that you're making things in layers, especially when you know that you're going to be animating it. And we did that anyhow in the Photoshop file. So we have the background layer, we have a medium layer, and in this instance, we're putting a 3D water element layer in there, so therefore the camera can go over the water and give it that depth and sell the shot. So once we've got it set up, we're gonna do a little bit of a cheat. We're gonna use the mask tool now, so making sure that the layer is selected. I'm gonna use the mask tool, so I've just turned the layer off so you can't see it, and I'm tracing around the edge of where the water is. And then I'm gonna make sure that the mask comes off screen to accommodate the movement. And then I'll turn the layer back on again. Now, once I've done that, the next thing we wanna do is make sure that the layer blends in. So I'm gonna go down, make sure the layer is selected, and I'm going to select overlay. And by selecting overlay, it's gonna make it transparent. So that when we play it, we get that water shimmer on top which is what we're after. So I'll just quickly show you a RAM preview and show you what that looks like. And as you can see, we've got that nice water effect that's happening on the layer. Now, what we need to do, I'm gonna duplicate the layer now, and then I'm going to delete the mask. So press M and then delete the mask on it. And I'm gonna turn the transparency back to normal so I can see what I'm doing. And then with the copied layer, I'm going to then put it into position exactly the same as I did beforehand. So again, I'm going to drag it away, align it up. I'm going to turn it to a 90 degree angle and then put it into position. Once I've got it into position, I'll turn the layer off, making sure it's selected, get the mask tool. And I'm going to go around the same edge again. And I'm going to mask around it. So therefore, it sits and trims the layer. And then I'm gonna turn it back on again and change the mode back to overlay. So we've now set up our scene. I'm just gonna make sure that we turn our curves back on, make sure all the other elements are turned back on in the composition. And I'm gonna go back to the original composition window. And then I'm going to just trim the timeline. So I'm gonna bring it down to 10 seconds on the timeline. I'm just gonna run a RAM preview so we can see what we've got. So we've got the water effect that we're after. Now we're going to uh, set up the camera. So let's go back to the start of the timeline. Once we're at the beginning of the start of the timeline, let's go to the camera, drop down transform, and we're going to start playing around with the camera position. So I'm going to set the stopwatch at the beginning, drag the cursor at the very end of the project window, and I'm going to use the position and start to zoom in to my scene. So where, well, what I'm doing is actually I'm trying to find out the location or the endpoint of the scene or the frame in which I'm animating the camera at. So I've just ran a RAM preview now. So I'm just having a look in the original frame in which we'll be saving at the end point. But we'll go back into where, where all the other project files are in the other composition window. And we're gonna have a look to see what it looks like in the 2000 by 2000 pixel image so you can see we've got a nice gradual slow motion giving that depth now the next thing we're going to do is going to go back to the camera we're going to go and we're going to set some keyframes with rotation so we're going to be uh, using the x rotation so let's go to the beginning of the timeline and i'm going to make it plus four and set the stopwatch to set a, a keyframe and go to the very end and we're gonna make some adjustments to the camera so that we got the camera moving up and down the X axis. So we've already got it selected as plus four and now we're gonna drop it down and set the value 
to around about negative one. Now, once I've done that, I wouldn't mind making some more adjustments to the camera. So I might actually go back to the very end of the, or make sure that the frame is at the very end of the timeline in the workspace, so at that 10 second mark, and just make some finer adjustments to the position so that we zoom in a little bit further to the image. So one thing you can always do, obviously, is uh, keep on making adjustments, finer adjustments to the camera itself. So we're gonna have a look down the frame. Now you can see some of this is uh, falling off. We don't have anything out there. We can extend the background scene if we want to, but if we have a look at the perspective, you won't see that because of where we're actually looking. So let's check that. That's fine. So let's have a look at that. So as you can see, we've got a nice look of depth. Looks like we're going into a different scene and we're coming over the water of the edge and giving you that nice look. Let's see what it looks like in the big mat. So obviously this is a tutorial showing you the basics of it and bringing in that dimension. Now, the last finishing touch that I want to do, obviously you can move the camera wherever, anywhere you want, you put boats on the water if you want, and put them on a 3D layer and have them sitting there so that the camera flies over the boats and so forth as they're coming up to the edge. Now, the last thing I want to do though with these two camera movements is I want to drag over these keyframes here, right click, and I want to select a keyframe assist and I want to make easy ease. By selecting Easy Ease, what happens, and I'll show you that once I render that out for you, um, or I'll go over to uh, the Doctor Strange one, but you'll see that it actually will start up nice and slow, and then it'll end slowly. So you have a nice uh, camera move in, and then uh, comes up to a stop. So that's the end of the tutorial. That's how we do the digital map painting and add an animation to it. So as you can see, we've got some nice depth. We've got a nice image that we've created in Photoshop. Now, this is obviously done in the Marvel world with Doctor Strange. However, there's nothing stopping you from going out there and making a matte painting for another movie or your own short films. And that is how we animate the digital matte painting in Adobe's After Effects. Now, if you want to become a Filmmaster subby, it's pretty simple. You have to just subscribe to the channel. You can like us on Facebook and or on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, master it.